Hello crafty friends, it's Alicia of the Call Me Crafty Eye YouTube channel and in today's video I'm going to be sharing with you how I made my first set of cards using the August 2020 sheet load of cards. I hope you'll stick around, get a few tips along the way and see how I made them. Thank you so much for stopping by today. If this is your first time to my channel, I hope that by the end of this video, you'll be inspired to click on that subscribe button below and maybe even tap on that bell for notifications. If you're already a subscriber and regular viewer, welcome back. I'm so glad that you're here again. I'm so excited to be back to show you how I created my first set of cards using the August 2020 sheet load of cards. Yesterday, I shared a look at the set, so if you want to see it close up, make sure to visit that video. Not only did I share that, but I told you how you can download the file for free if you're a subscriber to my channel. August 2020 is a special edition. By subscriber request, it is using up your 6x6 six six paper. And keep in mind that even if you don't have 6x6 six six paper, you could cut down your 12x12 12 12 to get started. Also, don't forget when you're done here that all of my collaborators will be sharing their card sets today. They are all linked in the description box below. I have crafters here on YouTube, um, crafters who share on their blog and on Instagram. So I hope you'll go check out what they made and leave them some love. In front of me are most of the supplies that I will be using for this month's set. If I add anything later, I will be sure to let you know. When I do go to the process video, I will start a voiceover. If I leave you with any questions, as always, leave those in the comment section below and I'll answer those as soon as I can. For my papers today, I pre-chose six pieces from Jen Hadfield's My Bright Life 6x6 pad. Here's a look at what I chose. Now, in my mind, when I was choosing these papers, I wanted three that would kind of go together. So later when I mix and match the pieces, these three will always go on a card together and these three will always go on a card together. So when you're choosing your papers, keep that in mind that they don't all have to coordinate. You could pick three from one paper pad and three from another. I'm going to be making this card set for a friend and all of the sentiments are going to come from Sweet and Sassy Stamps Be Encouraged stamp sets. I have number one and number two and I just love the sentiments in them. For a little accent on some of my cards in case the sentiment doesn't take up the complete sentiment block, I'm going to be using these two little leaves and this is a My Favorite Things die. It makes a basket. I'm not sure if this is available anymore. If it is, I'll link it in the description box below. Let's get crafty. I'm going to get started on today's cards by cutting all six of the pattern papers per the instructions on the sheet. Now I won't go over specific dimensions here, but a couple tips for this. I started by cutting my pattern paper to the height of piece A and B. Then I cut that piece down into the individual widths. You'll see that I set aside the bottom strip. On the instructions it says to cut this to 3 inches wide, but I'm going to leave it 6 inches for now because later you'll see that some of my sentiments require a little bit more than that 3 inches. So just a heads up, if you're going to make these, you might not want to cut that bottom strip just yet. Next, I got out a piece of 28 pound vellum and I will be cutting it per the instructions for CS1. I just like the way vellum, it allows you still to see some of the pattern paper beneath it, but it helps whatever is on top of it kind of stand out from the background. Once the vellum was cut, I got out a piece of white cardstock for CS2. I do go ahead and cut six pieces per the sizes on the instruction sheet, but knowing that some of my sentiments are a little bit wider, I go ahead and cut, I think it's two or three more that are three and a half inches wide instead of three inches wide. One of the things that sheet load of cards is great for is that it's kind of a jumping off point. So you can adjust the sizes of any piece and add or remove anything to fit what you need or what you want your final cards to look like. 
Here is a look at all of the pieces that I cut for my cards. Like I mentioned earlier, I want to cut some of these leaves from the pattern papers for the cards. But because that strip that's at the bottom that does have some extra space is not quite wide enough, I will actually be cutting it from piece A. Because you'll see here on the sketch that piece B is going to cover up a portion of that. So I set my die in place and I tape it there with some scotch blue removable tape and I run it through my cuddle bug. You can see here now I have a couple cute leaves and those holes are going to be covered up by other pieces on the card. Not only is that blue tape removable, it is also reusable. So I use that same small piece on the dies in all six of my pattern papers until I end up with 12 cute little leaves to use later. Once I have all of my pieces cut and die cut, I go through and mix and match the papers kind of for little card kits. I choose one pattern from piece A, one pattern from piece B, and then the remaining pattern for piece C. Off camera, I cut and folded three pieces of white cardstock to yield me six top fold card bases. Now I can start putting some of the card together. The first thing I do is add adhesive to the back of piece A, and then this gets centered on the card front. Once that is in place, I pull the strip of pattern paper, which is piece B, and I mat that with the strip of vellum, which is CS1. Now this does get centered left to right, but it does fill that vellum top to bottom. That then gets adhered to the front of the card to the left, making sure that I covered up where I had die cut out the leaves. I continue this same process for the remaining cards. And now it's time to do the stamping. I will be using Versamark with the Detail Gold embossing powder, and I went ahead and chose one of the skinnier or not as wide sentiments and one of the wider ones so you could see how I stamp and prepare both of those. Because I will be embossing, I did get out my embossing buddy, and before I stamp that first sentiment, I use that on the paper. This just ensures that my embossing powder does not stick to where I don't want it to. Now you'll notice that I just placed the gold strip toward the bottom of this, and that was just so I had an idea of how far up I needed to stamp my sentiments. This might not necessarily be the colored strip that goes on this sentiment, it was just more for placement. Once that was stamped, I pulled out my little tidy tray there, and I poured my embossing powder over the sentiment block. For now, I'm just going to set that to the side and go ahead and stamp the smaller one. Now you might have noticed I am stamping the sentiments a little bit to the right, not centered left to right, and that's just so later there are room for those die cut leaves. Once both of these were stamped, I then pulled in my heat tool and heat set that powder. I did the rest of these off camera, but here is a look at all of the sentiments that I ended up using. For some added dimension on my card, I want to adhere the sentiment block on foam. I don't want to use a whole lot of Stampin' Up! dimensionals or a whole lot of my foam tape, so I pulled out a sheet of kids craft foam I have, and I cut some pieces down that would be slightly smaller than each of my sentiment blocks. Speaking of sentiment blocks, now it's time to get those put on the card front. The first thing I do is adhere the pattern paper strip that goes with the card to the bottom of my sentiment square. Once that's on there, I pull in my non-stick scissors and just snip off the excess on each end. Then I added some ATG adhesive to the back of one of the foam rectangles and put that on the back of the sentiment block. This then got some more ATG added and then the sentiment block was placed on the card. 
I then continued that same process until I had all of the sentiment onto the card fronts. And here is a look at those in place. Then it was time to get the leaf die cuts on the card fronts. Now I chose the two patterns that were not whatever the strip was on the sentiment. So on the first card, I chose the gold polka dots and the black and white stripes. I kind of played with the placement of that and figured out where I wanted it. And then I brought in my art glitter glue and I added a little to the back of each leaf. Once the leaves were in place, I set the card to the side and I added a clear stamp block to where the leaves were just to help it stay in place while it dried. Once again, I continued the same process for all of the cards. I hope you enjoyed getting to see how I made today's set of cards. If you did, as always, I appreciate a thumbs up. Now don't forget that if you want to download the August 2020 sheet load of cards, check out yesterday's video, the debut video, which is linked below. And also don't forget to stop by all of my collaborators' channels, blogs, and Instagram accounts. Until my next video, I hope you're all having a crafty day. Bye-bye. Thank you so much for taking the time to watch all the way to the end of the video. I hope now you'll consider clicking on one of the videos or playlists I have linked above. And if you're interested in any of the products or tools I used in today's video, I do have some links in the description box.